As we think about digitizing content for our collections, the question comes up, is it an art or is it a science? We're talking about things that are amorphous and not so definite. On the other hand, there are things that are very determined. As we think about all the factors, what is it that makes us add something to a collection? What is it that adds value? As you think about potential objects to digitize and to provide access to. Is this something that really will enhance access? Is it something that will give you more than you would have just by looking at the object in the reference room? The other is to think about providing access to scholars that are around the world that before had to come and actually pay money to access your collections and to spend their summers in your research rooms. It really provides access as you look at digital collections to people that really don't have the opportunities to do that and really enhances access to that scholarship. What is the value of the content that you have? Is it something that is going to be a contribution to scholarship? Is it something that would have a potential use that people have not used it for before? And by digitizing something, are you adding to the value of that content? There's a preservation aspect as well. You can provide access to something digitally and then it really reduces the handling. For instance, at the University of Kentucky digitized a newspaper that was the first paper published west of the Alleghenies. And this was a partnership with the Lexington Public Library. They had the collection, the source documents. As we think about the westward expansion through Kentucky, many, many scholars had interest in the content of this paper. And so there was a bad microfilm copy. So people kept pulling off the copy off the shelf. And over the years, that handling takes a toll on a paper. And so by choosing that collection of papers, that particular title to provide digital access to, it really protects it. One thing that you can think about is, do you have the legal right to digitize something? Just because something is after the magic copyright date, it doesn't mean that you cannot digitize it. Copyright holders, if you can contact them, they're often very happy to provide the rights and to give you permission. Another thing that you can think about as you acquire collections is securing those digital rights right at the beginning so that those questions are answered and you can save yourself trouble down the road. If you're digitizing for NDNP, you don't have to worry about securing permissions for newspapers since the program is designed around public domain content. As we think about collections, potential collections for digitization, does this collection add value to other collections? Is it like things that you have also already digitized? Is it something that complements collections in the region? Is it something that complements, that could be added together with a collection that someone else has digitized to make an even richer collection? Is it unique? Very often, special collections in libraries have these unique materials that are the only one. Those are are things that are great targets for digitization, things that people don't even have any idea that you have. You know, all of a sudden you can expose these items to the world. It's a good thing for public relations for your library. It's a great thing for users, and it's a great reason to digitize things. Another factor is, is it technically feasible? Is it something that you have the ability to do? Is it something that is just so beyond your means that you can just discard that as a possibility? Do you have the actual means to digitize a collection? As we think about creating partnerships and working with other institutions, you can think about values, you know, collections that you have that add value to other collections elsewhere. For instance, Civil War newspapers. Other libraries with around this region, around the Southeast, have great collections of other kinds of Civil War materials. Put these collections together and you really create a much richer research environment for the user. When you think about finding partners and partnerships, it kind of follows along natural lines. You may belong to other consortiums and think about users in terms of a broad collection with your partnerships. As we think about materials for digitization, is this worth keeping? Is it something that you want to spend money storing? There are very robust costs for storage and then the migration of those materials forward. You want to make sure that you have the infrastructure to do that and do you have the infrastructure to do that? Do you have a repository? If not, can you get it? Can you partner with somebody 
and build a, ro a robust repository or put it in a safe place that is beyond making backups. You have to have those digital preservation standards. Can you meet those? You've got a certain size requirement for photographs, for instance, and then newspapers. Newspaper pages are really large. And so as you think about the storing that content over time, you really, it's just a math problem at that point, is like how many megabytes per page times how many pages in an issue, how many issues in a year, how many years do you have? It's fairly substantive, that kind of storage that will be required over time. When you think about the funding, do you have the funding already for a project? Is this something that your institution has made a commitment to and has decided that you know, you have a robust program and this is just something that it's part of what you do. If not, is there grant funding available? You know, many programs have started on the backs of grant funding and you could leverage small pilot programs into a program that's worthy of getting, receiving a larger grant, you know, federal grant for instance. And then do you have the match, the, you know, the federal match, um, they, very often that cost match is required and you can think about it in terms of your staff time. That's often something that you can count as your cost, uh, as a match for your costs. And Or is this something that you can leverage with your institution in adding resources into your program that will make up something that will meet that match requirement? You also think about donors. Digitizing content and providing access to newspaper content or to other kinds of digital content really can be something that is a good sell for a donor. This is something that has great interest for many people. Many people are interested in genealogy and or local history, and those ties to the local can make it a great opportunity for getting a grant or a, a donor, you know, an endowment even, that would support your program.